Hello there, and welcome to this short presentation detailing my experience of building the border models BF109G6 in 135th scale. We all know that plastic kits of the BF109 have been around forever. Uh, there are dozens of representations by many different manufacturers and virtually all of the variants are covered by very good kits on the market at the moment. So, why do we need another one? Well, Border, to be fair, have tried to make something different. They've produced the first ever 109 in 135th scale. Another initiative is the inclusion of a randomly placed figure and one of three different metal sets in each kit. These items are in a separate sealed package, so it's impossible to just peek in the box and see what you're getting before you actually buy the kit. Interesting idea this, I have to say I'm not too sure it's a winner in the long term. Opening the very full box revealed 11 sprues, two of them transparent, a small photo etch fret and the mystery package containing whatever goodies the buyer has been lucky enough to get with their particular kit. In my case it was the white metal propeller blades and a resin representation of a rather bored looking high altitude pilot complete with separate oxygen mask. The pilot is a well sculpted piece but as very few aircraft modelers ever clutter nicely detailed cockpits with figures it seemed a spurious item to include to me. There are around 270 plastic parts some of them extremely small. The very sharp and clean standard of moulding was immediately apparent as was the pronounced surface detail Slightly this latter feature will become the subject of a bit of debate. The real 109 was flush riveted, but the engraved rivets on this kit are very pronounced and probably not to everyone's taste. Makes highlighting very easy though for those who like to do it. Construction begins with the representation of the DB605 engine. A little matter of 60 parts were involved here and the completed item is certainly one of the best features of the model. The fit of parts was very good and the whole unit went together easily, although the positioning of the ignition leads was a little tricky. A couple of parts are misnumbered on the instructions, but this is unlikely to cause problems to anybody with much experience. You do need to take care when positioning the 12 separate exhaust stubs, parts F3. If they're fitted snug to the engine block, it results in a slight upward cant and that will cause real problems when fitting the fuselage halves around the engine later on. This is because the slots provided in the fuselage for the exhaust stubs are a very close fit. If the stubs are canted upwards this pushes the whole engine down and out of alignment with the rest of the fuselage and it's a real pain to correct. If this sounds like bitter experience that's because it is. When viewed from the front, the stub should be at right angles to the vertical plane, even if a little trimming is required to achieve this. Would have been helpful if this point had been made in the instructions, really. Whilst on the instructions, unusually they contain no stage-by-stage -stage painting guidance at all. Fortunately, there's plenty of easily available information on the BF109, so this isn't much of a problem for anybody with much experience. Next comes the cockpit. This is generally well done but does suffer from some odd quirks. Firstly the instrument panel. This is a single piece relief moulding with no decal provided for the dials. It looks okay but a laminated brass film effort would have been much better. Secondly the gun sight. This is nicely shaped but for some reason the separate reflector lenses are moulded in grey plastic rather than as transparencies. Same applies to the wingtip lights. They obviously need replacing with small pieces of clear plastic sheet. Thirdly, the seat belt. No seat belt is included in the kit as standard. It depends on the look of the drawer as to whether a photo etch one is included in the mystery package alluded to earlier. Not so with this particular kit, so scratch building was the only option as no aftermarket product was available at that time. The twin MG131s, however, beautifully represented. Each one came in six parts, including a separate breech cover, and really looked good when completed. 
the cockpit side walls are well detailed, leaving little extra for even the most avid super detailer to add, and all parts assembled well. Then it was time for the rudder and tail wheel to be added prior to the joining of the fuselage halves. The rudder and all the other major control surfaces are designed to be movable using the same hinge and bar technique as featured in the large scale trumpeter kits. It's likely that most modellers will go for a fixed option but the hinge mechanism does give a realistic appearance to the control surfaces and the way they make with the wing and tail plane. The cockpit and engine fitted well inside the fuselage half, but when the halves are joined, success depends very greatly on whether the exhaust stubs have been positioned correctly. If they have, then the halves assemble easily and well, with no filling required at all. Now time for some decisions to be made about how much of the finished model is to be opened up. The cowling panels and machine gun cover can be displayed open or closed, or transparent replacement parts are available as another option. Such is the quality of the engine detail that at least some of it deserves to be displayed, so a single open panel was chosen in this instance. Assembly of the main undercarriage units comes next. These are essentially very good, but need a bit of care to assemble correctly. The wheel hubs are very nicely detailed and the tyres offer a flattened or unflattened option. The legs are well done but the axle unit needs careful positioning in the main leg. It's held in place by a pin and is apparently supposed to be movable. This is highly unlikely to work in practice and the position of the unit needs to be selected and glued to provide a firm base for the model to rest on. The actual degree of compression needs to be carefully checked with references or the sit of the model will not look right. The compression jacks can be fitted once the correct extension has been chosen. Brake pipes are included as fine styrene mouldings, but will only fit if the axle is at full extension. For an aircraft on the ground they would need some careful heat treatment to get them sufficiently curved to fit. On the model here they were simply replaced with lengths of round section rubber. Strangely, parts to construct a pair of uh, dodal rocket tubes were included in the kit. This is odd because none of the aircraft catered for by the decal sheet actually carried them. A bit frustrating because they're really rather good. The colour guide at the end of instructions does include a scheme for an aircraft that was fitted with them, but decals will have to be fabricated from scratch unless the aftermarket comes to the rescue. The wing is a single piece lower member with separate upper panels on each side. Assembly was straightforward despite some unhelpful mistakes in the instructions. The magazines for the underwing cannons were assembled and positioned on the lower wing. The instructions have these positioned back to front, the right way is obvious in the real kit, as well as having the modeler drill out some strange and totally unnecessary slots and holes in the lower wing to accommodate them. Flaps and ailerons are assembled and fitted well, but it's advisable to leave off the radiator flaps until later as they're fragile and easily broken off as the build progresses. The underwing MG15120 cannons are another example of crisp moulding and the gondolas are offered as both opaque and transparent parts, all fitted well, and the instructions did correctly point out that the cannon should not be fitted to the Barkhorn aircraft one of the three decal options provided. The assembled wing fitted well to the fuselage with just a little filler required at the front edge of the route. Final stages of construction include assembling and fitting the tailplane and elevators, no problems here, and the cowling panel on the engine underside. Strangely for a kit where the fit of parts is generally outstanding, the underside cowling panel didn't fit at all well, being too wide at the rear end. Easy solution is to display it in the open position, as was done here. The propeller assembled well, the lucky draw, or white metal blades were used, although these offered no obvious improvement over the moulded plastic items included anyway, but at least it was easy to add a bit of subtle chipping to reveal the bare metal underneath. The last job was the canopy. This is a beautifully clear three-part moulding and fitted very well. The windscreen section was added to the fuselage before the main painting was done. 
the other sections were painted separately and added at the end. A late pattern Erler canopy is also included but is not appropriate for this particular model. Most likely Border will be releasing a full kit of the later variant sometime in the future. A most fortunate aftermarket canopy masking set was released just in time to be used in this project. This was produced by Scale Mask and proved to be very good indeed. When it comes to the main paint job, things are fairly straightforward. Three aircraft represented on the decal sheet, all sport variations of the same theme. Border refer to ammo products paints in their painting guide, but the life colour set was used here. I found the life colours work very well for spraying larger areas, but tended to quickly clog the airbrush tip when mottling. The only solution I found was to keep wiping the tip with a damp cotton swab and be prepared for a long job. The finished paintwork was given a well thinned coat of Johnson Clear which included a spot of each of the three camouflage colours to soften the contrast between the colours on the model and prepare the surfaces for decaling. The decal sheet was a disappointment, three issues really. The one I've identified already about the choice of subjects not including a machine that carried the rocket projectiles. Also the contents of the sheet are very basic, containing almost no stencil detailing at all. And thirdly, the opacity on the white areas leaves a lot to be desired. Experienced modellers would do well to cut stencils and paint the upper wing crosses as was done on this build and also paint the fuselage numerals which wasn't but should have been. On the plus side the carrier film which looked quite prominent on the sheet did disappear nicely when the decals were actually applied with the usual microset of Microsoft system. The undercarriage propeller and canopy parts were added finally. The undercarriage legs were rid of a sloppy fit and care is needed to ensure they are angled correctly and also firmly enough fixed to take the weight of the model. Small shims of thin plastic card were used in the locating holes to ensure this and plenty of drying time allowed. Once the stretch sprue aerial cable was applied, the model was sprayed with another well thin coat of clear and the job was done. In conclusion, this was an interesting and, I have to say, really enjoyable build of a kit that tries to be different and has a lot of positive features. It's beautifully moulded, the sharp and crisp detailing, the fit of parts is generally excellent and the finished model is a bit of an eye-catcher too. So what could possibly be wrong? Unfortunately one or two things as you've probably gathered. The nature of the surface detailing is likely to cause some debate. The unusual surprise package marketing ploy may leave a lot of modellers wondering why they have to rely on potluck to get items that really ought to be included anyway, and the decal sheet is a disappointment. Still, as the only show in town in 135th, this is still a very creditable effort. So, thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you found the presentation interesting and helpful and in particular enjoyable. Not quite sure what I'm going to do next. It could be any one of those three. Haven't decided yet. Anybody got any preferences? Let me know. Thank you again and goodbye.